All right, so what's up? Many thanks for hanging out with us right here on Why in the Morning. This is Thursday Vibes. And straight up, we're going to talk matters of sport on tech. And uh, before that, you can chime in on the hashtag Why in the Morning everywhere on all our social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, as well as at Y244 channel. And you can find me personally at uh, Brian Sako 101 And for those that are not seated in front of your screens, you can stream at the comfort of your own device on www.kbc co.ke forward slash y254. Forgive my voice today, I'm a little bit straining. Now, joining us live in studio today to talk about how to develop a secure website, a company. You could be an individual person, you want to have an amazing website or an amazing blog, or even creating yourself an app. And I feel like we've already had this interview behind the scenes already. So joining me live in studio is uh, Anne Mumbi Kamau. She's uh, currently studying uh, computer science at uh, Strathmore University and she is a brilliant mind and I can't wait for us to get into this conversation. First of all, nice to meet you, Anne. Nice to meet you too, thank you. Good morning, welcome. Good morning too. Right, so if you were to introduce yourself before we get to the business of uh, computer science and developing mm -hmm. a website, how would you introduce yourself um, to your friends or even professionally as well? Mm -hmm. uh, so I am Anne Mumbikamau. I am a computer science team student at Strathmore University. Uh, second year, I mainly develop websites for small companies, for personal individuals like blogs, uh, business websites and all. Uh, I'm also a writer. <laughs> I write a bit mm -hmm. and uh, I love art. I love art. You love art? Yeah. Interesting because you know uh, the art part in computer science is is, is different, totally different. Yeah. But I love the fact that you are multi-skilled. Mm -hmm. Now let's get to the business of computer science. Yes, how to create a secure website from scratch? Um, if if you were to be approached by a company and maybe they want you to create them like a, a, a health website or let's say um, we had had this conversation behind the scenes before a cooking website. What are some of the prospects that you'd consider before you know you start? to walk that journey with them of now presenting to them something tangible on the table, like even a demo. If you were to do that, uh, where would you start? So we first start with uh, looking at the requirements. If it's a cooking website, like what do they need for, uh, what is their website for? What do they need it for? What specific tasks are needed there? Then we also look at who will be using the website. Okay. Uh, the clients, it will it be the customers, will it be the admin, will it be both of them? So we look at that, we look at the time frame that is given to us, uh, at what time at, or after which duration do the clients want us to have produced the website. Right. We also look at the cost, the cost needed for the whole website, the number of workers who will need on board. Okay. Yeah, so that's where we start. And then now, after all that, after collecting all the requirements, whatever we need, and all that, communicating with the clients, even the customers, whatever they'll need, now we get to planning. Right. Now we plan whatever we'll be needing. We plan the sections. We need this section done after a certain period of time right. to present, so that we'll have a model to present at each given stage. Right. Uh, after that, we now go to designing the whole thing. Right how should it look and all that. We right. have many software tools that we can use, Figma and all that. Right. And then now we get now to the coding part. Okay. Now in the coding, we don't, uh, for example, if the project is to take six months, we won't wait for the whole six months for us to now go and present the project at each section, maybe after one month or after some weeks, whichever progress that we've made, we go and present to the clients to see is it matching with what they wanted, are the colors good. So there's that constant feedback uh, from us to the clients, from them to us, to see how the project is going on and all that. Then after, at the end of it, now we implement the project. We check whether, we check whether it's in, uh, it's in um, terms with what they had wanted. Uh, we check the maintainability and all that. Right, interesting. Mm -hmm. And uh, for example, now you've already started to create uh, the website from scratch. 
And uh, you've, you've, you've already started that journey, you've already started to walk that journey of like, you're not constructing it. You're not constructing it now. You have already now started with the domains you talked about, um, the coding part. You're now putting up uh, uh, components together. Uh, mm -hmm. What are some of the tools involved in this, in, in this construction now from scratch? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, if you're working as a team, there are Okay, there are platforms such as Mira, which okay. help you to, uh, to monitor the progress of each person. There's also GitHub repository where everyone can add whichever part they're doing and then you collaborate. Mm -hmm. uh, there are tools, as I've mentioned, such as Figma to help in designing. Right. There's Laravel, there's uh, Visual Studio Code, yeah. Right. Now, uh, interesting, you mentioned Laravel because it, it kept on popping up on one of my friends. Uh, and then the Java, like, what exactly is, is Laravel? Because <laughs> to me, it sounds like uh, some drug, you know, yeah. some, like, uh, some cough syrup or, or some prescription. But an interesting name, Laravel. Uh -huh, yeah. What exactly is it and what does it do? So, Laravel is a software tool that enables you to develop, a, it, it like provides a template when you're developing a website such that you don't have to start from scratch. It has classes, uh, it has objects implemented there. So you just have to make, like add, add what is, whatever is not there uh, and your project will run. And uh, you, can you, okay, you can continue adding whichever uh, you want to add, whichever views, whichever models that are there uh -huh. so that you don't have to start from scratch. So in a way it saves time. Uh -huh. Yeah, you can say that. And uh, unlike when using, uh, let's say, Visual Studio Code, uh -huh. for Laravel, you don't have to, like, run, you don't have to be running the, the database MySQL uh -huh. on the background, okay. provided you have it installed, you have the migrations and all that on uh -huh. the Laravel, you just run it. Right, interesting detail. I think before somebody gets a grasp of that, like now mentally and visualize it, you need to have attended a lot of classes, a lot mm -hmm. of training and even done like pre-class and now class, pre-class and class, because it's really mm -hmm. a, a technical course that needs a lot of attention. Uh, yeah, it needs a lot of attention. Right. Um, though not so technical, like right. if you sit down, there are a lot of YouTube videos that you can learn from right. and all that. They help a lot and then uh, when you have like projects on of your own just for practice and all it will really help and improve your skills now speaking of projects uh who are some of the people that you managed to work with that you would say you know this one i did like if you see that website just mm -hmm. know it's me and Mumbi behind it who are some <laughs> of them that you've worked with that you'd say you're proud and you made something so incredible for them and they rewarded you for it um Okay, the, the people who I've worked mostly with are uh, students who want to implement small businesses around campus or they just have an idea that they want to express or they want a website to market themselves. For example, um, you just want a website where if you're going to apply for a job, just give them li the link and from the website they can see your bio, they can see whatever you've been working on. They can see something personal about you, right. a video about you, and all that. So I've been working uh, on that, uh, majorly with students around campus and all. We have uh, a project that I'm currently working on. Uh, it's by a student from JQuat uh -huh. who wants to implement like an ID recovery system where if you collect an ID, you can put it on the website, upload it, and then other students can also log into their website and confirm or check if a lost ID is there from that and that they can get it. Interesting. Yeah. Hopefully that will be so handy because a lot of people have lost their IDs as well. So it's yeah. <laughs> Hopefully he'll, he, she, it's, it's a she friend or a he friend? It's a he friend. Hopefully he makes it and then he can, ma he can make it to be interviewed right here as well. Because yeah. that's an interesting idea. The government needs to know about that because my grandma calls it kipande. Oh my God, there are so many.
Now, uh, the features of a website, um, the topic is developing a secure website. Mm -hmm. uh, many a times we've seen uh, even Twitter, a uh, Twitter, or Kasema, oh, Twitter ime hang, suji, oh, leo website yake haiko. There's a time even Instagram went on a lag, like you couldn't post or even see anything. Mm -hmm. But also we've seen companies, when you're, uh, well, they'll put up a, a post on their social media and say, uh, somebody hacked our website, we are no longer you know, available on this website, but we are creating another one. What could have possibly have happened that led to that, that, you know, our website had disappeared to, our account had been hacked to, boom, and then we are now creating another account from scratch. What is usually the, 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 the nitty gritties that, you know, went wrong and then all of a sudden things went sour? Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to hacking, mostly it's, there are usually loops, there can be a loop in a, in a website. So now for a hacker, he will use that loop or that um, our weakness in a website right. to now get access to the website and now take control over that website. As admin. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it becomes yeah. the admin of that website. Uh -huh. um, so this loop, you've mm -hmm. mentioned something called that loop. <coughs> I, mm -hmm. it's a, I know it's a terminology, right? Would uh -huh. you say it's a, it's a terminology in your... Would you say it's a terminology in that area or that aspect as well? A loop uh, is like, you know, a hole a that yeah, like a loop in hole. Summer, huh? mm -hmm. A loophole is like a weakness. Like when they were developing the website, in terms of security, there's something uh, they missed. There's a security breach or something mm -hmm. that they didn't consider. So now when someone else comes to know of it, they can use that to hack into the website. Right. Yeah. And... Uh, at times, there is also overloading of websites. It was supposed to, maybe the server uh, is supposed to accommodate a certain number of websites, but then now it's overloaded. There are so many servers. For example, let's say in a uh, student's module, a website right. for schools and all, right. and uh, there's an assignment to be submitted at 11.59. Right. Mm -hmm. And students love submitting at the last minute. <laughs> so you find like 200 students at 11.58 submitting. A login. Yeah. So now that will cause uh, a logging. Like now there will be surge, so, sort of a surge. Mm -hmm. There will be... Um, Something. Yeah, it hangs. Yeah, it hangs that's because the word that comes up. Yeah, because yeah. there are too many people who are trying to access, access the website right. uh -huh. at that at that moment. Right. Yeah. Um, remind me of the other thing. Uh, uh, the other thing was, you know, Instagram, it uh -huh. and then all of a sudden somebody couldn't, or an account that was being used by a company, all of a sudden it may disappear. Mm. Yeah. Or another good example is uh, ABC uh, Tamir Elections. Uh, Mahat, <laughs> Mahat shouted to him. He was the common denominator. They have said we can't access uh, Mahat and Anetwaje, Jose Kamago. Please, yeah. not, I've not seen his face. I, I'd love to see his face. Yeah. They were like, Jose Kamago, Mesema, we can't access the servers. Oh, we need to do some intellectual rights to actually access it because even we are not honest. What was happening in that situation? Because I'm saying, how is the access servers? Mm -hmm. And then it, it just happened that nobody else has this kind of knowledge of knowing how to access the server and see who's entering in these servers and exit. And then all of a sudden, it was Jose Kamago, Tena Hayuko, Africa, Akosuji, Wapi. What happened I in the IT aspect? Yeah. For such a case, it's uh, where the developers. Okay, when you're creating a website or a product, the person who developed it or the people who uh, went through the whole process of developing need to be there when maintenance part comes. So when you find a case where uh, we have a website, it was developed, but then after it was developed, the developers disintegrated. Now they are nowhere to be found. <laughs> so right. now the people who know the basics of or the back end of that website are not there. Right. And they are the ones who maybe put certain uh, conditions or certain security uh, Let's regulations. Say access features, yeah. yeah, access features. Right. And maybe they didn't document it well. Mm -hmm. So now, when it comes to the maintenance, the people who are now handling it at that point, yeah. now it causes an issue. Yeah, they, no, do, they don't even know the know how. Of, yeah, they of don't how to know how to go through that, through it. You know, yeah. website. So I, I wish we had a chance to bring you on the table, explain you on this is what was happening. Because 
every Kenyan till today, it's even in history, like, you know, we didn't have access to servers because the developers mm -hmm. wanted to do, they, they needed an intellectual license to be granted to people in Kenya so that oh. they access it. And, and they talked of intellectual integrity. Like if we tamper with it, you know, mm -hmm. we, we are liable for a lawsuit again. And I was like, why? Why, why is that? But the website is Kenyan. It's designed for IABC. But then now the constitution comes in, the IBC is an independent, you know, body that actually runs it on minded. So you have no power to force it, you know. Yeah. So I think it was, it was quite um, a, a horrible situation. But I'm glad you've explained. So a lot of people would be wondering, mm, Kono, what, what usually happens to this IT stuff? Now, mm -hmm. let's come to the servers. Um, I have, st speaking of steel servers, you've heard of a company where somebody, um, to a server, to do a certain feature, and then it comes a Konyesha differently on the back end. I make affect all the computers, Adika mm -hmm. change programming. And uh, there's also been a, an issue of like a bug it will engage, change it, hack passwords, and then you're no longer even able to function well with mm -hmm. the computer because it's like an infestation of something, some sort of a virus or a bug. What usually exactly must have happened for that to occur? Um, when someone tampers with the server, okay, when you, you as a, let's say, customer or user of a website, when you send a request, the request first goes to the server. Okay. And then from the server, it accesses whichever resource that you want and sends it back to you so if the server has been interfered with it means that uh, whichever resource you'll you'll want to access from the server may not be available or it may send a resource that you do not want oh, okay yeah and then now on the issue of bugs and all someone okay bugs are usually or maybe let's say something like a Trojan horse. Mm. It's or just a virus for yeah, somebody who doesn't understand the tech lingo. Virus. Yeah, a virus. Lingo, uh, virus. Yeah, a virus. Yeah. So yeah. it can occur when someone can actually create a virus. Okay, somebody can create one. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then uh, for basically attacking mm -hmm. another person website and. Uh -huh. Yeah. Please so, explain. To so me. it happens. F there was um, a case where it's a WhatsApp group. So someone sends in a, a file an application file. I don't know if it was a WhatsApp application file or something of that sort. So when someone opens it, your WhatsApp crashes, your whole WhatsApp crashes. So now that's like a software or an application that someone has made mm -hmm. that causes all that effect. So like when it gets into the system, it can access, it yeah, it right. can access certain information. Right. And that's how actually also hacking comes in, right. where you can find mm -hmm. someone sending you a link. Mm -hmm. When I say I'm logging into this link, yeah. and uh, you will get 10,000. <laughs> I'm logging into this link to add 20K followers. You're like, yeah, let me do it. Yeah, and, and then, then you, you, you log in, your, and then you, know, you, you even give disappear. your details there. Yeah. Your so Gmail, now, your password. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. Now that's how someone can you hack your it. account. Right. So majorly, if you don't know where a link is from, you know you don't trust the source of that link. Don't go Love into him. it because uh -huh. it can be a case where you get a link and uh, you open it. So while you open it and you try to exit from it, maybe you see a button of exit. While you're trying to exit from it, it could be that it's actually sending a message to other people in your contact list, telling them to send money. There has been such uh, a case. Wow. So horrible. Yeah, it's uh. bad. So after that, you just find like a hundred messages on your WhatsApp <laughs> right, where you yeah. had sent to people and mm -hmm. all that. Yeah. I, th I think personally, I've had uh, an experience of uh, there's somebody who sent me a link on, on Instagram DM asking me to log in to do and promote the website. But when I clicked on that, I, I told myself I will try. I will try, but I'll be very cautious. Mm -hmm. I clicked on it and then I forgot to a place it was showing, insert your password and log in with the Gmail out. I went to the person and told you, bro, I told them, bro, I'm too smart for this. You can't hack me. <laughs> you can't hack me. And then I, 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 I consulted a friend of mine, Tom Marvin. He told me, bro, don't, don't, don't do that the second time. Yeah. You're lucky you even clicked on it and it didn't, you know, make your account disappear. Yeah. So I think that's, those are some of the common cases. There's even one when somebody sends you and I say, Ma, click on this link and you'll get a thousand bob. Mm -hmm. And if, if others will even create for, for, for brands like even supermarkets. You know, you know, Taskies has to be this offer, click uh -huh. on this website, and you're going to get 10,000 straight to your Mpesa. And you keep on clicking, and the numbers continue to go up on that website. What usually happens for that? 
um, okay for example when they use the name of a brand or most of the time when you study the the link well or the name or whichever brand they're using there's usually an error with uh maybe there's usually something off about it like when you check the official website the original website and you check that there's always something altered maybe there's a letter that's usually not there no. there's um uh maybe the brand the brand name looks almost it's almost the same but then there's something that's usually mm -hmm. not on mm -hmm. the original one mm -hmm. so there's usually comma. some alteration yeah and even a comment could be a, mark, yeah. yeah exactly mm -hmm. so now uh they're, they're usually creative because when you see you want money yeah. <laughs> everyone wants to go for it right. so such um when they do that now whatever program that they have run on their end when you log in it now accesses your information because you are giving them access to your um, to your passwords, to your Gmail, to your what. Now you even end up receiving some messages, funny messages right. through SMS and all. Right. Uh, another interesting question: How do you make um, a website uh, user friendly? For example, it's for a person who is disabled. Maybe they are blind. Mm -hmm. But uh, yes, blind people do web they use websites as well. Um, maybe uh, it's for a person who is uh, uh, handicapped. Maybe they don't have hands. But you want you want to make it uh, a user interface friendly website for them to be able to use and navigate it. If you were to make it for them, what are some of the things that you would consider to ensure that you know it's a user friendly, like it's compatible with each and every kind of personality? Um, okay, for such websites, uh, they need. Uh we can incorporate features like gestures, where when you gesture something on the phone, the phone is able to know what it means. We can, uh, we can bring in such things as uh, voice recognition. Okay. When you give a certain command, it, uh, it will take you to a certain, um, a certain page or a, tab. Or, yeah, mm -hmm. a certain tab and all that, yeah, right. mainly such features. Right. Now, uh, let's say for competitive, uh, let me say for commercial companies, uh, what do you think are some of the things that, you know, for, uh, for a person who wants to create for them a website, the things mm -hmm. that they should do to ensure that, you know, uh, that website is also, and as much as we talked about it, it's a friendly, but it's appealing, it's colorful, it's bold, it's all about, you know, bold colors, it's attractive. Mm -hmm. in, especially for these big commercial companies and uh, I think behind the scenes we had talked about a radio website and a TV that were actually conspicuously you know interesting when you look at mm -hmm. how, how, how does it go on that one? Um, making a competitive website you have to know what's the need of the website what is it going to be used for and uh, for it to be appealing to the customers and all you also need to consult with the people who will be using it. Right. Like, no, when you create something, don't just create it uh, alone as if you're the only person who's going to be using it. Right. So you need to consult with the clients. What do they want? What do the customers want? And you also need to be flexible. You need to be agile. Uh, whatever requirements they need, whatever changes they need made, you also go and make it. Right. Plus, also drawing inspirations from other websites helps a lot. Like not purely your own idea, which can be good, but drawing right. inspirations from other websites, great websites that are there, can help a lot. Um, something else is uh, okay for the colors. Okay, there's also the part of let's say wordings. Right. It's mm -hmm. don't like put so much, so many words right. on the website. Like just go direct to the point. Right. Yeah, because it's not like a blog and all that. Right. We just need the functionality there. Right. Yeah. Speaking of that, what's the difference between a website and a blog? You know, somebody will say, ah, I'm in on a blog, but another one will say, oh, this is a website. So for person who is watching, uh, what, how, how do they tell or contrast between a website and a blog? Mm, okay, a blog majorly is, uh, okay, it's a, we can say it's a website in a way. It's uh, type of website where now you you may mainly talk about you're writing something an article or certain discussions and all that like you're viewing um, giving your 
point of view Insights about something and, and, and all that. About yeah. different topics, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. And, and then, then now our website. Well, website can be, it can vary, it can <coughs> be a business website, you want to sell something. Right. It can be a management website. Right. It can be, yeah, it can be a marketing website, it can be a school website, yeah. Right. Also, I've seen, I've seen uh, like personalized websites and uh, they have like the persons of the client's name. Like, for example, if I were to have mine, uh, I can have it as Sakwa dot yeah. com i'm, I'm uh -huh. a brian circle dot com slash something dot, dot something blah 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 now uh, at what point do you get to you know have your own personal domain and uh, for speaking of domain uh, for a person who doesn't know what a domain is how would you explain it before you answer you know how to create a personalized you know website domain uh -huh. um a domain is uh okay let me explain it like this for example, where you see www. Dot, um, right. dot Brian dot Amazon dot com, dot blah, com blah, blah. and uh -huh. all that. So that is divided into sections. Right. So for the domain part, that's like what, how do I put it? Um, where the website is being serviced from or where the website is being hosted. Right. That's the, the domain. Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. The host of the domain. Uh -huh. is, there, is where the website is being hosted. Right. So now if you want to personalize, personalize it, it, now you yeah. have to have your own servers. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now from it being hosted by a server somewhere else, right. you can now integrate. Now you need to have your own servers right. to, host that, to host that website. Right. Yeah. Interesting. Because, you know, um, Personally, I, I, th I think at some point I wanted to have uh, my own uh, my own domain, and mm -hmm. then I was speaking to also a friend who was telling me, "But Sanko, you have to give me like two thousand. When I'm going to number, you give me ten k. There's another one who said I need like twenty k. I'm like, bro, what, what do you mean? And then he she she explained and said, "I want to go and buy for you this domain." So I never understood what was happening at that point. He yeah. said he's he wants to go and buy for me a domain, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we left it at that. <laughs> yeah, so you also need to, yeah, to buy the domain. It's like uh, to certify, to certify, for example, when you are, uh, you want to host a website. All right. And uh, you can just do your code and all that. But then there's a secure website and there's a non secure <laughs> website. Yeah. So there's usually HTTP. So for right, a secure yeah. he website, it has to have HTTPS. HTTPS yeah. yeah, the S for the secure website. Mm -hmm. So now for you to make it secure, you have to be certified. So you can certify yourself, uh, which I think most people won't trust. Right. Yeah. And then now for you to now be secured, like for people to trust, you have to buy to buy the certificate. All right. Yeah. So that's when you, you hear of stories of somebody buying a domain. Mm -hmm. All right, now I get it. Now, uh, let's talk about uh, the competitiveness of it all, because you know, I know there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of web, 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 would you consider yourself a web developer as well? Yeah. Right, mm -hmm. there's a lot of web developers. Uh, mm -hmm. There's even a story of creating an app, but then would you create an app? Are you able to create an app you can create for us one? If yeah, you can. yeah, you can. <laughs> yeah, uh, just a little description because uh -huh. I know we have like four minutes before we exit. Yeah. How, how does someone come up with an app that's so secure? Let's say, for example, even your own app, or let's uh -huh. say our Y254 app, we want to have ours as well for Y254 TV. How, do you, how, how would you create it for us? Um, okay, just the development tools that I used, uh, the languages, Java, JavaScript, Python. Right. Uh, depending on the use of the website or right. the flexibility of the website, what you want it to do for you. Right. Uh, if you want it to incorporate certain aspects, for example, machine learning or AI, and right. you have to know which languages to use, right. and now you come to the coding part, or, okay, the requirements part, of right. course, and then the, you code the website, and um, of course the, there has to be certification for you to host the, the, I mean to launch, yeah, to yeah, launch, to the, launch app the app and uh -huh. to certify it, All yeah. Right. So does it, it's, it's like also coming up with a website from scratch now. Mm -hmm. 
Right. What do you say that you know you've met? Uh, let, let me say, let me just uh, let me put it in a simpler way. The, the, are there challenges maybe that you face uh, that you would say even all the web developers go through this before you come up with the final ending? Because I've heard somebody say, and we had this conversation also behind the scenes. So you told yeah. me just one comma made you not sleep for an hour, yeah. one uh, exclamation mark, or just one letter at the back end. Sure. In, you know, like maybe are there any other that you guys go through? What was your IT? <laughs> uh, okay, I think generally, when you come to IT, you know, at times when someone hears uh, when I'm to IT and I'm curious right. to, uh, can you make my laptop? <laughs> right. Can you fix this? Can you fix the remote yeah. and all that kind of a thing? So, other on technical issues, right. uh, can be the issue of certification. Right. Can the, be the issue of a client trusting you with a to make something good, something appealing. Right. Yeah. Uh, another challenge can be uh, when it comes to relation with the, relating with the clients and uh, the client keeps changing like he wanted this the and needs, then after uh, some time, yeah, the, the needs, need from, the needs boom, change. Um, yeah, so now keeping, it becomes confusing yeah, now. Yeah, to yeah. now update the okay. app to suit the needs of the client. Right. Yeah, that's an issue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. As we finalize, for example, maybe you had a chance, maybe a chance mm -hmm. comes up in future with the government for you to work with them in terms of even creating websites. What is, what is that one uh, speciality that you've always wanted to come in and fill in as a gap if you had a mm -hmm. chance maybe in future? Um, uh, one thing that I've always wanted is, uh, okay, my speciality uh, is majorly in AI artificial intelligence mm -hmm. so I think it's something that's growing in the world and right. uh, it's also something that needs to be needs to come up first in Kenya right. mm -hmm. um, especially for ladies in STEM so that encouragement of more ladies to go out there to to work on these technical issues to be to be competitive yeah right. that's something that I really want Wow. Okay. You have uh, you have friends also who, who you work with together because yeah. you mentioned you've created also websites for yeah, students. Yeah, I have and, and, and. Okay. Shout out to them. We are out of time. I'd just like you maybe to give uh, social media handles if you have one, or yeah. if you looking for work, or maybe a person watching, they want to access your services and maybe help them create some two three things here. That's your camera right there. If ah. they want to access you, where can they find you? Uh, okay. On Twitter at Mumbi Kamau on Instagram at Mumbi Kamau's and uh, on LinkedIn at Ann Kamau. Right, that's where they can find you. Yeah. Do you have a number? Yeah. <laughs> you want to give? It's okay. If you can, if you can give it, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. so my number is 0701-251510. Again? 01 or 0701-251510. All right, thank you. Uh, we have been speaking to Anna Mumbi Kamau. She is uh, currently studying at Strathmore University, a degree in computer science. She is second year, by the way. And she, she sounds like she's already graduated and she's already in the industry. Interesting. I wish you the best of luck. I can't wait Thank to you see so you much. out here working with Safaricom, working with the biggest brands ever. Amen. You're welcome. And Thank on that note, we are going to take a short break. But before that, you can find us on the hashtag Why in the Morning. Today's still Thursday vibes. Val will be coming up next with uh, interviews. Of course, we have artists as well who are on standby. But you can stream in again for free on www.kbc.co.ke forward slash Y254. And personally, you can find me at Brian Sakona1. We take a break. We are back with much more, including interviews. Don't change the channel.